Hello, I'm going to be talking today about scanning Fuji FP100C natives on a Epson V700. Uh, this process would be the same on a V750, 800, 850, uh, even the 500. So, as you can see here, I got this uh, print. I'm going to get it in focus. Um, I got this print of my kids playing outside, and you see it's a little bit dark, but uh, as we know that. Um, FP100C makes really great negatives if you're underexposed just a little bit. Uh, and you see this print right here. Uh, it's severely underexposed. Uh, we'll see how that negative comes out. And you can see here as we zoom in that, that this negative right here uh, is the one of the kids playing outside and that one's going to scan pretty well. This one over here is not going to scan too well. But I'm going to scan them both just to show you what it looks like. Uh, normally I tape this down, but instead I just use some coins here, just because a little bit quicker to show you what I'm doing. And uh, I take the film scanner and I remove the the reflective backing here. I slid it out so I could uh, scan for film. Get the prints out of the way. Close the lid here. And then we hit the button to do the preview. Or rather, I should we just go over here in the software and we can see it on the screen. Let's do preview. And close that. There we go. Okay. Now I need to do I need to set this to kind of zoom in here. See this is all wrong as far as what it's supposed to look like. So I had it in reflective mode. So instead what we want is film with film area guide. And yes, I'm okay with that. Then we hit preview again. Scanner does its thing. It's going to take a minute for it to warm up. Now, I do know from experience that the the really underexposed negative is just it's just not going to work. Like the the colors are going to come out miserable, um, and then the other one should be okay. Um, you can tell after doing this for a little while which negatives are going to look good and which ones aren't going to look good in scan. So we're still waiting for this to scan. And I do apologize for my, my ghetto setup and fingerprints all over the glass in there that uh, I was doing this in a hurry just to make this video real quick. Alright, see? There it goes, it's finally doing its thing. There's my cat. Say hello to Ziggy. Alright, we're done. Okay, so here we are. We got our little negatives here. They come out kind of amber looking, which is fine. So what you do is you go in here and this. Select that area, boom. Notice that like, the automatic color is actually pretty close. There you go here. Now I think what happened here with this scan right here is because I had a coin here, the anti-counterfeit was blocking this out. Normally this does not happen. Uh, it's also possible that because I had the coin up here on the glass that it screwed up the film calibration. Um, one thing you can do is to move the negatives down the glass a little bit to avoid that issue. But for brevity's sake I'm just going to skip that because I still got most of the frame here. Uh, what you want to do is you want to select the square uh, inside the edges. If you get the negative a little crooked, like you know, a little cocked from the uh, edges, that uh, <clears throat> it's probably better to just restart. Unless you can, if it's just tilted a little bit, like like this one right here, you can get the box within the um, edges of the frame. So you can still get some of those those edges. But you can see here, even with this scan, that it was um, it was pretty close. Now, I am a little bit surprised with this one that there is some detail in the negative that uh, I didn't see. Uh, so what we can do is go over here, look at the histogram. You can see that the histogram is pretty tiny though. Um, set the levels out this way. And then brighten up the gamma. Uh, it's a little bit there. It's still, still kind of dark. Um, this one right here, this one came out pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit on the cool side. So we go back over here and adjust its histogram as well. And 
there. Right there. Now we go to the blue channel, since what we're looking at it is a little bit on the blue side. You can see that. A little bit on the cool side. So we do with the blue channel. The best way I find is adjusting the highlight clipping. You see the highlight clipping here and adjust the highlight clipping, it changes the color there. Um, I, you can mess with the gamma, like the brightness of the blue channel, but I find that actually adjusting the black and white points is makes makes for better results. So I'm kind of fixing the highlight here, kind of getting the blue out of it. Now you see that's a little bit on the green side. See back over here. That's not going to give us, you know, see how sharp that cutoff is? That's not going to give us much to play with. It's going to be very sensitive to movements, like, you know, moving this 223 down to 222 will be um, a big change here. So I'll do that. It makes it a little more green. See that? A 224, like that. Uh, usually the red channel, and this is the same case here, see how, you know, how scrunched that histogram is? But you can see, if you zoom in real close here, you can see that it's uh, clipping the, the highlights of the red, which is why the color balance is off. So I moved it back a little bit. See right there. So I'm going to put it back to where it was. You can kind of see that it's still a little bit green. So I put it back down, I've knocked it down two, two points. And that's, that's pretty close. That's close enough where you can go in Lightroom and, and kind of fix up the color uh, further. Um, usually with the scanning, I just want to get close enough to, to get it right in Lightroom. So, any questions, leave comments. Um, thanks for watching.